Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, and I've been in the podcast industry since 2011. So I've seen it grow and evolve, and as such, I wanted to share some thoughts that I think might be helpful to anyone getting started with a podcast, right? It doesn't have to be a big major brand, but you know, it could be very much like an indie podcast, uh, much in the way that this actually is, right? And so I um, wanted to share those thoughts. Now, first off, yes, in the past couple of years, there's been uh, an uptick in podcasts being produced. Certainly during the pandemic, you know, with everyone stuck at home, it was like, oh, let me, let me do a podcast. Let me launch the podcast that I've thought about but never did, right? And, you know, now that we're quote unquote back to normal, uh, many people have sort of gone away, but still, um, there remains this idea that like, oh, everyone's doing a podcast, therefore I shouldn't jump in on that because what's the point? Well, the point is, it's as if you're saying, well, people have written books before, therefore I shouldn't write a book or people have made music or you know movies and so forth, therefore I shouldn't make music or make a movie, right? It's the same thing. As long as you have something that's worthwhile to bring to the table, then yes, if you wanna do a podcast, you can certainly go ahead and do a podcast. That is my principle. Now, you know, uh, part of that is also, well, what do you talk about? Certainly there's many, many topics and you might be inclined, well, other people have already touched upon these topics. The thing of it is the messenger is equally, if not more important than the message. You know, how many times in your own life does someone close to you give you a piece of advice and you don't really take it but then someone else gives you that same advice and you're like, oh, that's brilliant. And then your friend is upset that you didn't listen to them, but you listen to a complete stranger, right? So, you know, the way we deliver um, even the same message, right? We could take the same little nugget of information and the way it's delivered from me versus somebody else, you know, my, my inflections, my cadence, you know, the word choices, all that matters. And so, you know, if you really believe in what you have to say, it's not just a, well, you know, this seems to be a trend, so let me jump on that. No, 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 no. You know, anything that I've shared, um, you know, a lot of it, other people have actually shared, right? I don't, I don't deny that fact. In fact, I pull a lot of my information from multiple sources and then kind of shape it through my perspective, right? And try to provide new ways of looking at it. And, that is important, right? And so that can be a way into podcasting as well, or at least it can give you that allowance to, you know, just have a little bit of grace with yourself and the idea that you don't have to necessarily come up with something completely new. It's okay to just share what you are knowledgeable of and passionate about, and let's say an expert in with the world, right? I think that's worthwhile in and of its own. And also, just in general, podcasts have kind of evolved where, you know, the simplistic way was, you know, a solo podcast, let's say, such as this, or an interview podcast, but now more so, right, um, you know, true crime podcasts, that was kind of a big wave and continues to be. But also narrative podcasts um, are really kind of taking, taking hold of audiences and so forth. So there's all kinds of genres there to try and, and, you know, you can yourself experiment with it as well. You know, who's to say that like you can't document your day much like people vlog, but do it from an audio perspective and then have like sound cues um, to change it up of every time you're in a new location and stuff like that, right? Um, I think you can, people, you know, consider podcasts to be sometimes so narrow when in fact, it's only limited by your creativity. So utilize that if you'd like, right? Um, and the other thing is, I think, you know, it doesn't take a lot to start a podcast. And in fact, I would even say, you know, to launch with, especially if you've never really done one, try to do it for as cheap as you can. Because you, who knows? Like, you don't want to spend all this money even if it's just a couple hundred bucks here and there on something that like you're just gonna put down after a few weeks. Our cell phones are amazing, right? Um, I mean, in fact, like during the pandemic, people did 
in, in terms of movies and TV shows, they recorded actual um, ADR into their phones. Now, what is ADR? It's a line replacement for a movie. And the reason for that is like, let, let's say if on set, you know, it didn't get recorded clearly, so you want a clean take. And legitimately, people would record into their uh, voice notes app and so forth and send it to these studios. Now, of course, they did it in like like crazy places like their closet where they had all their clothes to like, you know, um, lessen the noise and so forth. And that is a way to go about it, right? Um, you know, so just the same way you can get creative with the actual content of the show itself, you can get creative and have a good show just on your own. You know, and to that effect, I think there's an overemphasis on just quality, right? Because quality is determined by the audience, not by us, right? If I, let's say, draw stick figures and make this fun little short film out of it and it entertains millions of people, who's to say that's not quality just because, you know, it's not as well animated as something else? You know, a lot of the podcasts that I listen to, like let's say Gary V, a lot of times his audio is terrible, but it's terrible because, you know, he's just got a mic on and he's at a dinner event or some sort of, um, you know, gathering of sorts, right? Like where there's like fans and, and so forth and he's interacting, answering questions. But because those questions are so honest and genuine and he's giving such valuable answers, I can forgive the quality of the audio simply because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm getting something that's of high value to me, right? It's beneficial for what I'm looking for. Uh, another example of this is the Team Deacons podcast. Uh, they record their interviews over Zoom. And for context, the Team Deacons podcast is a podcast hosted by Roger Deacons and his partner, James Deacons. Um, Roger is a world famous cinematographer, done so many movies, 1917. Um, uh, he did Blade Runner, like just uh, Sicario, worked with the Coen brothers, like just on and on and on, like his accolades. He did Shawshank Redemption. Like he, he's been in the business for a long time, very well respected. And they connect over Zoom, right? And people have their qualms about Zoom audio and so forth. But when it comes to, you know, when I'm listening to the Teen Deacons podcast, yeah, every now and then I can hear a little bit of the, the drop in quality and so forth. But, you know, what they're doing is such a gift for filmmakers that <laughs> it doesn't matter to me, right? So the point being that have a little bit of grace with yourself and if you really trust that your message and what you're putting out is worthwhile, then the quality of it can be forgiven, okay? And to that effect about the last two examples that I gave, both of those are examples of podcasts that are giving insight. They are provide, they're essentially how to. And, you know, from my experience, those are the ones that do really well. Um, in fact, there, there was a movie uh, with Anna Kendrick where she played this uh, vlog mom. And to research for the role, she watched a lot of mom vlogs, as you might imagine. And she saw that the ones that had the most views were not the most well-produced ones with like, you know, pristine kitchens, great lighting, great, great, great cameras, um, editing, and so forth. They were the ones that were the most honest, real, and their through line was to deliver the best information for other moms that has benefited them. And so... All of that to say, if you can provide your audience with, with valuable knowledge, that can drive you forward. It really can. I think too many times, and I've seen this firsthand, people try to go after you know, the, the, the big time names for their podcast, right? Thinking that the growth will happen by having those names just be on your podcast. And it certainly helps, you know, I'm not going to discredit that, but it's not the catch-all, like, trajectory, like, all of a sudden, you know, if you have 
Beyonce on your podcast. Yes, that will mean something. But for the sustainability and the, and the lifelong trajectory of your podcast, it's not going to mean as much, right? And I think that's another thing that I really want to dispel is this idea that there's this singular thing that will just take your podcast and boom, it'll be the sensation that you know you want it to be. It really takes perseverance, patience, and consistency over and over to do it, right? And to continue to want to, to deliver that value to your audience, right? And even if that value is you're making a, a, a narrative podcast and the goal is to entertain people, you know, great, that counts. But audiences are smart and they know if you're just doing something because it's a trend, you want to get famous, um, and so forth, right? They, they sense that. In fact, there's, there's been a lot of podcasts that I've been turned off of because on the surface, they, they aim to provide that sort of, you know, value to the customer, quote unquote, when in fact, it's just riddled with ads, you know, the host over talks and just because they love the sound of their voice and so forth, right? I, I'm, I'm tur- tuned off of that. So, you know, all that being, it's it, the, the path to success is not a straight, like it, it doesn't just happen, right? It has to build brick by brick as the metaphor goes. And also you have to define what success is for you. Being candid, I know my stuff is not the most like viral and I don't know that it ever will be, but that's okay because for me, the connections with the people that that do consume the stuff that I have, there's a value there for them. And, you know, for me, my through line is essentially like whatever my interests are and whatever has benefited me, I try to put out there. And I also know that not all of the episodes will apply to every single person. So a lot of people may skip an episode and so forth. Now, that is fine to me, right? That, that goes against conventional wisdom and so forth, but I've defined what success is for me. And so you have to do the same thing for you because conventional wisdom says download numbers are the thing that matters because then once you have download numbers, that means you have an audience, you can you know, sell your stuff, you can sell ads, and you can start to make money. And all that stuff is great, but again, it doesn't if, if, if that's your driving force as opposed to really building that foundation of what are you giving the audience, then it's not going to go. Um, and to that effect, like, yeah, people think that there's shortcuts, you know, just getting, let's say, as I said, newsworthy or like big time celebs and so forth. It helps. But, you know, just because you're your interview goes viral that one time and you know gets picked up by news sources and stuff like that it doesn't mean that will actually bring people back to the the podcast itself many times i mean most people don't even read articles anymore they just read the headline and just kind of assume that they, they know what the hell the article is actually talking about and it certainly won't you know create that longevity that you're looking for with the podcast you know you want people that return again and again because they love the podcast. Those are the real valuable people of a series. So that's important. And I think too often, you know, how you spend your time and your resources, which also means financially, is important, right? I think I, I, I've seen so many people put their money into the wrong things. And that's why I opened up talking about the quality of the show being subjective. And, you know, that's like I, I've seen so many people put an overemphasis on all this equipment, building out a studio, having all this accept, expensive video stuff and so forth. And them continue to do it and it not yield the results that they're looking for 
when instead they would be much better off spent taking that time and effort and money and putting it into marketing, right? Creating great episodes of high value, um, you know, reaching out to iTunes, Spotify, and so forth to promote it that way. And then also, you know, spending on ads where appropriate, making appearances on other podcasts that are similar, where you can also bring high value and, you know, um, introduce their audience to you and so forth. Like there are ways to go about this, but it takes effort, right? And, you know, some of that is also, it's always uh, like anything in life, how are you going to divide it, right? Like we're all limited on resources. You know, we would all love to have so much more than what is available to us in terms of time, money, and other resources, but it just takes time. And I think, you know, in that way, identify what are the, the, the biggest levers that you can pull to create the maximum impact. And then as the show grows, yes, you know, then you can add more bells and whistles to the thing. But as I said, too many people put that overemphasis out of the gate. They overspend. And then they're frustrated when it doesn't go the way that they hoped. And then they abandon it, right? So if you just do it from a pure place, like, I mean, I can look at, let's say the Smartless podcast, right? Huge, huge podcast. And yes, from the outside, and especially now, you can look at it like, oh, it was always going to be successful. Well, you know, those guys didn't think so. It's, you know, Jason Bateman, uh, Will Arnett, and, and, and Sean Hayes, they were just looking for a project to do during the pandemic, wanted to kind of get together and create this podcast, right? And, you know, it was, it's a, it's a sensation. It really is, right? Um, but they weren't expecting it. Same thing with the Team Deacons podcast that I keep mentioning. Like, they, they were a podcast born out of the pandemic, and they just wanted to interview amazing people and talk about movies in a very in-depth way that isn't seen or, or heard much, you know? And they did it. And it was successful. It, and people were talking about it, and, and, and people were loving it. And so it was this organic thing, and then, you know, now they have a season two of it, <laughs> right? And we'll see how long season two goes, and then... You know, I'm sure when Roger does another movie, it'll be put on pause and then season three comes out. But even if it doesn't, like, it's just brilliant, right? The the fact that, like, they just had this idea. They didn't know where it was going to go. And they give it their whole heart in, into it and, and are seeing the success from the fruits of that labor. And that to me is how you grow the podcast. You know, you, you do it from a place where, yeah, part of it's, you define what success for you is like and slow and steady you build to it as opposed to having these illusions of grandeur and, you know, nowhere to spend. And in fact, if anything, as a rule of thumb, almost refuse to spend. You know, how can you grow it in, in, in the most organic possible way? Because money is not a cheat code oftentimes, right? If it was, Hollywood would, you know, with, with all their like mega, you know, multi-hundred million dollar movies would never have a flop, right? It just, so in that, that way, I would encourage you to be conservative and just build and build and see where it goes. When you do that, like with these other examples, yes, they're mega examples, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I know I am every time someone just leaves a comment because the comments show to me that that this person took the time to really listen to what I had to say, engaged with it, found something meaningful in it, and now is responding to it in kind. That's wonderful. So... I hope this gives you some perspective. As I said, it's just uh, an introductory viewpoint into 
you know, how I consider starting a podcast, uh, the mentality necessary. But as always, you know, you're welcome to ask questions, give your thoughts and opinions. So comment down below, or you're welcome to hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. I would love to chat with you. And if I can, help you out. Thank you as always. I truly do appreciate it. And hope to see you next time.